Okay guys, welcome back to Linda's Pantry. And today we're gonna do a little garden tour. It's a little breezy outside, so you may or may not have good audio. But as you can see, my dining room table has a ton of plants on here. And the reason they're in here is because we had close to a hard frost last night and we have a scare of a hard frost tonight. And it's May 21st, can you believe that? I got a new little grapevine. We're gonna see if we can get that to grow. I lost four, no, three over the winter. So these are all kinds of tomatoes. So um, tomatoes and peppers and kale. And I could put the kale out there, it would be fine, but I'm gonna plant everything at the same time. I've got a couple tomato plants already in the raised beds. And, um, but I don't want to, I don't want to risk losing all of them. And we get plenty of time to finish our crop. So we're usually sick of it by the time, uh, it's time to pull everything out. So let's go see what my hubby's been doing. He got the big beast of a rototiller going. There it is. He had to, um, actually take it apart, clean it out, and then order some parts for it. But... It, it did a great job. It's purring like a kitten now. Huh, honey? So he's got, you, you have to take down the fence and the watering system um, out of there to get this rototilled. And, um, you know, these two patios were here uh, when we moved in. Probably should have moved the straw first, maybe. Or no. Oh, okay. So that straw over there is the straw bales that I had in here last year and I let my grandsons take them apart and they've been decomposing all winter so I'm going to use that as a mulch over my garden. So once I get everything in it'll help hold the moisture and the heat in. Um, kind of disappointed about my strawberries. It looks like only one per top survived the winter. Another good reason to have a greenhouse possibly next year. Rhubarb, now I already picked that clean uh, to make my rhubarb pie filling. So, um, I'm okay with that. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go over here. Now this barrel, I planted green onions and there's a little tomato plant in the center. And my herb barrel over here is doing great. And this is, this bench looking thing here. That's a woe table for the dogs for training. So just in case you see that in my video. And here comes that wind. It is cold. Oh, okay. I'm going to give you a little bit of that plant. My um, other rhubarb, a tomato, a tomato, and another pepper plant right there. And then that's parsley that just comes back on its very own. So look at the chives. Aren't they beautiful? Oh, I love them. And then we have um, no apples on the honey crisp apples yet. They flowered at different times, so I don't know if that had something to do with it. Uh, but this little pear tree has a few pears on it, or it did. Hopefully they didn't fall off. <laughs> oh, there's one right here. Here's one. There's a couple. Oh, there's one up there. I don't know if you can see. Anyways, I'm super excited. Hopefully, uh, I get to actually eat them. <laughs> um, we took out a bunch of compost out of here uh, and put it in all the barrels. I didn't have to buy any dirt to, you know, redo the barrels. Um, so, we'll get to turning that over and start again. Let's see. Let's go out here. Now, here's two more bales. We've been using them for dog training, but... I'd like to uh, use them to have like a hotbed. Okay, so here's the raspberries. Now remember last year I picked Pico season a quart every other day. So I anticipate that this year and they've multiplied. They've moved out <laughs> and over here and I have volunteer lettuce, garlic all along from last year, all along the fence there. Um, this grapevine did not come back, so I'm going to put that other one there, I think. We'll see. I haven't decided yet. I'm going to put butternut squash in here because it just thrived in here last year. But look at all those raspberries. They just 
multiply like crazy. Now, I also put 10 across this side last year, and they're, they've all multiplied. So we should get berries off this side as well. And we have blackberries down here. Nice, and they're, they're actually gonna grow this year, I think. Um, and we have a little bitty grapevine it has come back. And the raspberries just take over and enjoy the fresh fruit because fruit is expensive and they just thrive. So, anyway, that's what it looks like so far. Not very impressive, but you guys have all been asking, when are we going to get to gardening? And here in northern Nevada, it just, the weather doesn't give you a break. So, that's, <laughs> you don't recognize me? What's the matter? <laughs> he didn't know I was out there. Okay. <laughs> All right. Lives here. So I know. <laughs> I live here too. <laughs> All right. That is an update. I'll bring you back when it's warmer. I thought I'd bring you out here while I'm uh, finishing up some chores and let you know what we've got started. Okay, so I am actually took a break. I'm putting up this uh, string for my pole beans to trellis and they trellis all the way to the top so it just creates a really pretty little picture and so I'm doing that um, the rhubarb I mean as you can see I've got some plants in now we're about a week and a half out from the beginning of this video so the rhubarb's coming back good uh, need to probably tr trim on it it's got some weepy looking leaves there Tomato, tomato. I put a new grapevine in here. This is like the third one. We'll see, it, it seems pretty happy. It's been in the ground for a week and I put a fence around it so the dogs didn't dig it up because you know how puppies are. Yeah, okay. So here's a look at the yard. The herb barrel, it's pretty much at this point, it's chives and sage that's going to be that barrel and then I always put green beans in the back there to go up so we'll see um, planting at least twice as many green beans as I usually do oh and I have and my beans are coming up um, seven days I've got some radishes right here uh, and then on the other side of that pole there let me go over sorry about all the dizzy and that's why I decided to string this this morning because I've got a little bean right there poking out I'm so excited actually there's a few of them here so we are going to be in the green beans and on the kennels I put these boxes and unfortunately you buy these the frame itself and within two years that they don't make the stuff to fit it anymore so these were a little big so that's why they look all wonky but I've got green beans in the far one Swiss chard green beans in this one and Swiss chard and I've got two more baskets I'm going to put up here and I'll probably do um, beans again because you can train them to trellis wherever you want okay let's go see what's going on in the garden and Oh, there's my pretty girl. Mama dog, she's going to have some babies here in about 10 days. Oh, okay. There's beans in here, and um, I believe, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, uh, I put pole beans in here. So, um, that's cool. The, or not I've got pole beans in the back, bush beans here in the front, sorry. And then over here I've got a tomato plant, and that's an early girl. And, um, and then you can see really tiny, these are green onions, so the green onions are going to be great. And this one has carrots that have not come up yet and beans back there by the trellis. And I just love this little tomato plant. In fact, I'm going to go get another one for the other side. Little cherry tomatoes because I swore after last year I'll never have cherry tomatoes in my garden again. <laughs> it was crazy. So today my garden chore is 
as you can see the only strawberries that made it were on the top of this one and this one over here so I'm going to take take the tears apart I'm going to put fresh dirt in and I'm planting bush beans in these because again we need twice as many bush beans as last year if not three times um, I need to can up probably four cases of beans because um, we eat them you know, I mean I want to eat green beans every week so need a lot of jars okay tomato plant here rhubarb now I've already picked this once that's where I made my pie filling it's doing great though and we got to clean up this mess back here oh my gosh okay so what am I doing with the straw see the pile of straw I am mulching that around my plants um, it's already been broke down all winter and all last season and so um, it's not going to draw nitrogen out of the ground it'll just protect and give a moisture barrier so I've got tomatoes in here peppers all along the fence here is um, our onions red onion sets and green beans and green beans on the far back fence and green beans along here so when they come up and I think we've got green beans along the fence out there as well so I planted yellow squash zucchini zucchini and it's the Romanesca zucchini so um, it's my favorite it's got the most flavor and they can get quite big without a problem oh I see a cucumber right there okay so my cucumbers are coming up and I spilt a <laughs> I spilt a thing of a package of beet seeds and I see they're coming up and that's what I planted along here as beets so they should be popping through any time so I can mulch and what else I did jalapeno peppers the holy moly's Anaheim's and I believe a red chili pepper and I, you know I'll I, I'm like this every year you go to the nursery and you feel sorry for everything so you buy it <laughs> and let's see I'm gonna count my tomato plants Twenty tomato plants out here in the back and I've got um, five out front in the front yard oh 21 back here excuse me and I bought these again this is a oh excuse me 22 because there's one on the other side too um, this is the super Roma the Heinz variety and I had these plants here last year and I'm telling you the fruit on them are just amazing they're big heavy heavy in your hand um, big romas so they, and they it doesn't take too many of them to make a really good paste so I I've got um, four or five of them this year because can't really find a good Roma a paste tomato um, this year so that's what we're doing and the raspberries look great they're doing awesome and I planted out here I planted um, spaghetti squash and butternut squash again and if you guys have never grown it it does fantastic so the raspberries have just filled in thick this three years ago this was 10 little bare root plants so you can see how much they multiply and they're spreading over across the back there's also blackberries back there and all the tall looking stalks here um, that look like onions that's all garlic that I planted last spring so we should have tons of garlic more raspberries and then uh, volunteer lettuce that I just keep snipping it off and giving it to the chickens all right so Somebody's mowing. There's an overview of the yard. Looks pretty good. Got it all mowed yesterday. I've got two different kinds of pears on my pear tree. I got a couple little apples, and those are um, honey crisp. 
So I'm hoping next year we really get um, a good little bit from those guys. And there's also raspberries on the fence and gooseberry. So there you go. And there's my mama dog. Oh, Shotsy too. She says, oh my goodness. Hi. Hi, mama. Pity girl. So we'll be sure and bring you along for puppy videos. All right, guys. I got to get to cleaning up this patio. Got to put the whelping box back in the house. And um, it, it has been outside all uh, season undercover, but you still want to pressure wash it and bleach it. And um, then you're ready for the next round. All right. So there you go. I'll see you next time. Oh, I hope it inspires you to get outside and start gardening. And how about, um, oh, well, 24 tomato plants back here. <laughs> Jeez. That's not as bad as last year. Last year I had quite a few, so we're doing better. All right. I'll see you next time.